But what, I, what, what I'd like to do today is just begin with a little bit of history. And if you go ahead, hit the first slide. Thank you. People talk about the fact that this conflict, the, the conflict in the Holy Land, the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has been around for so long that it's really not something anybody can ever solve. It's been going on for thousands of years. People have been killing each other there forever. This is not true. And a good place to start, if we're going to talk about how this conflict began, a good place to start would be on the 29th of November, 1947 the day that the United Nations accepted the resolution to partition Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state. And this ridiculous map is what they came up with. Now, when you look at this map, before, before you even hear about the details, before you even touch on the details of this map, just by looking at it, it's, it's unbelievable that anybody expected that this would work. And of course, this didn't even last one day. In 1947, there were two communities living parallel lives. We had the Jewish community that numbered about half a million, maybe a little bit less than half a million, that were expecting and hoping to become a state. And you had the Arab community, the Palestinian Arab community, of about a million and a half people who were also in the process and had the expectation of becoming a state. Yet when the United Nations came up with this ridiculous plan, they chose to give the larger portion of the country to the smaller community, to the Jewish community. And the smaller portion of the land to the larger community. And then people said, and to this day you hear people say, see, the Arabs, the Palestinians, did not accept the partition plan, so all this is their fault. Is anybody mad enough to think that they would accept this? Would anybody in their, Palestine, in their place have accepted something like this? Obviously not. And obviously, like I said, this did not last even a single day. Because as soon as the resolution was accepted, the Zionist forces, what was called the Haganah, the Palmach, began a massive campaign of ethnic cleansing. Now the story that we hear, the myth that we're told about 1947, and I heard it once again today, earlier today, at the Seattle Times, is that in 1947, after the United Nations finally recognized the right of the Jewish people to have their own state, the Arab armies attacked, intending to destroy this fledgling state, this young Jewish community. And this is only several years after the Nazi Holocaust. Yet somehow, between the end of 1947 and the end of 1948, the Zionist forces were able to conquer almost 80% of the country, destroy over 500 towns and villages, including schools and mosques and churches and homes, and exile almost a million people within a 12-month period. How did they do this if they were being attacked by massive armies from the outside? But once again, when we look at the facts, we realize that in 1947, the Jewish community, the Zionist community, had quite a substantial military force. They had a force of close to 40,000 armed men, and well-trained, well-indoctrinated. My father was one of them. There was no equivalent on the Palestinian side. The Palestinians have never had a military force. To this day, the Palestinians have never had an army or a military force. There was no equivalent of the other side. The Arab armies, such as they were, didn't, didn't enter the war until late in 1940, uh, May of 1948. Much of the ethnic cleansing had already taken place. The war had been taking place for over six months by then. So, of course, this is a myth. This is a myth that nobody, nobody, nobody takes the time to investigate and question. But once again, the reality that in a 12-month period, so much was done exactly because that is what, that is exactly what was the purpose of these Zionist forces. To capture as much of the land as possible and get rid of as many people as possible. And that's exactly what they did. Would you hit the next?